Hello fashionistas, it's the wilds of western New Jersey and it's quite a day. We're having a snowstorm. Welcome back to Closet Confidential and let me just welcome you in. Who would believe, oh my goodness, our first big snowstorm and we're ready to go into the closet. <gasps> well, I'm kind of prepared. I got on these great shoes. And here we are in a great little what they call streetwear outfit. And I'm ready to take you back and re-welcome you to the vault. It's been a bit of time, but come on, we're going to have a great time. It's Elaine Lessig on behalf of the Canine Chronicle, Closet Confidential, on the Facebook page and on the web page, and let's go. Well, fashionistas, <clears throat> long last, we're back in the closet. I can't believe it's been so long, but it has. Life gets in the way, but sometimes things getting in the way are a good part of life. In any event, welcome back. You'll notice a few things are slightly different, but for the most part, it's all the same. But it's time to think about something even more important than what we have in our closet. It's how we can keep the things we love, maintain them, make them better, and enjoy them more. And there are several different ways to do them. So I investigated a whole bunch of websites and articles and different things, and I culled a whole bunch of information for us. It was interesting to see how many things d repeated themselves. And I thought I would make a whole big list of them, and my list got longer and longer when I realized that we do need to take care of our clothes. If we don't take care of our clothes, we're spending money on something we will never get to enjoy or the things that we love keep them a lot longer than we may think we would keep them. And one of the first things that I discovered about maintaining clothes is, is the way you keep your closet and the way you put your clothes into things like your drawers or wherever it is that you're putting them. And one of the things that I learned was it's very important that air circulates around them, but they be in the coolest place that they can possibly be. And then I realized for years, in the real heat and humidity of the summers, which of course in the northeast part of the United States gets pretty heavy, I have a fan blowing. I have one of those tall, thin fans that you can control the um, speed, and you can also get them to move. They oscillate back and forth. And I put one in the middle of the closet, and I let it circulate around so that everything gets a good, good airing every single day. And I hadn't realized until I read those articles what a valuable thing it is to do to maintain your clothes. So um, you can find them on Amazon. You can find them in all things like Walmart, Costco, wherever. It's a tall, thin tower fan. And it goes right in the middle and it will circulate for me and it actually cools as well. So I guess my clothes have had a really cool environment for all of these years, and perhaps that's why they stay so well. A couple of other things I'd like to discuss with you about maintaining your clothes is how do we wash our clothes? And I thought about it, and then I read a couple of really good articles and explained that things like our dark clothes. If you are wearing, I'm wearing a dark, this is just a little sweatshirt dress. But if you think about it, if you're wearing something like that and you're washing it, how do you wash it? Well, you read the instructions inside and the instructions inside do and in fact indeed say, okay, wash this in cool water with separate colors. Well, what they never told me and what I learned is, besides that, turn them inside out. They don't give me the reason, but it seems like a very valid point because probably the outside of darker clothes will tend to fade. Well, we don't want clothes fading. And so the best thing you can do now is to turn them inside out, wash them with the same sort of color items, and keep the temperature in your washing machine as cool as you possibly can. And then another thing I learned about all of that is be sure to read the label. Some of these things say, machine wash, do not dry, hang to dry. Well, I went and I checked out a couple of different things drying racks. I mean, I remember that as being something in the past. And it's a some it's something you can fold, you can buy them, they're relatively inexpensive, and if you don't have a place to hang clothes someplace in the house, you can certainly put things over a drying rack. And it's amazing how much better they will maintain your clothes, especially after you've taken the time to wash them inside out, get them out of the washing machine quickly and get them over the drying rack. 
I know that when I'm traveling, um, I often you have to wash something. It's just that simple. You're in a hotel room for a couple of days, and you realize that wonderful pair of Spanx that you wore today. Well, for goodness sakes, you're going to need it tomorrow. You better wash it. And what do you do? Well, I'll take out a hanger, like a skirt hanger with the clips that they have, that they will have for you in your um, in your room. And I will use those little clips and I will hand wash whatever it is I have to wash. I will hang it up on one of those hangers and hang it over the shower bar if there is one. If there's nothing, a door, whatever I can do. And there you go. Another way to maintain something that you really need. And the other thing I learned about Spanx is you never wring them. So ladies, we all know you have a lot of Spanx. Making sure that you don't wring them but roll them in a towel. Just take any kind of a towel, roll them in. Hang them up when you need to. And they will last a lot longer and maintain their elasticity. So there were a ton of things that I began to learn about how to maintain taking care of our clothes. A couple of other things. Better hangers. When we use better hangers, we really have an option of being able to look at the clothes that we have on them, be able to see them, and be able to see that they're keep being taken care of. For example, a silk dress, a, a something like that, soft, you want a more, a hanger that has a little more depth to it. A wire hanger is not the thing. The wire hangers are really good for transition, and sometimes you get the ones from the cleaners that have a little bit of padding at the top and will also have two layers of paper. They may be fine, but at the end of the day, it, those are not the good hangers to wear. With really delicate clothes, try the ones that are quilted. With the other clothes, you can try the thicker plastic ones. And also, you can get the ones that have an actual flat surface. And I like those. Um, it seems to be very easy to decide which of the clothes go on which of the hangers. Okay, here they are. Some hangers that I would suggest that we use. This hanger, interestingly enough, is... A hanger that you can get that actually there's yarn around them and they're really 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 good especially for knit clothing because the knit clothing doesn't fall off and you've all had experiences perhaps with your St. John's or something else where the knit just doesn't seem to stay on the hanger this gives them a really good shape and keeps them in really good condition you can find these you know in specialty stores that sell hangers Another hanger that I really like, this is more for heavy clothing. You might, this is more of a coat hanger in the actual sense of the word of a heavy coat hanger. And if you want to maintain the make and shape of your coats and not have them bending your hangers, the coat, a coat hanger like this, or for some sort of heavy wool suit or something else you might have, or even heavy denim, it'll really keep things in shape. And then this is the, the quilted one I mentioned. You can see it. And they're available practically anywhere that you, you know, that they sell hangers. And they really last. And I love these for the soft things that you need to keep, that you don't want to have a hanger, you know, the hanger angle that you can get. And these work really well. Another thing that works really well in terms of using your, using getting the most use of your clothes, of course, is a delicates bag. Have you ever seen them? They're, not, they're sort of a, a knit uh, almost a, a woven bag that you can get and you stick that in the washing machine and then your really good clothes don't get racked around when you're a, a beautiful sweater, um, a lovely blouse, um, even a dress that you, uh, you can wash and putting the delicates like that in there or you can pile all your underwear in and that should do the same thing. I just find that having these particular accessories they're, they're care accessories, and they're just as important as the necklaces we wear and the earrings that we wear because they're maintaining our clothes and making us look good. Clothes that are misshapen are not flattering. And since we are moving all the time in rings or, or getting things set up, we're bending a lot. We're, we're moving around, and your clothes can easily get stretched out and out of shape, and by good maintenance of the clothes, that you know you can get them back in shape. Another valuable thing to do is perhaps looking into some of the green cleaners so your clothes don't stink of the chemicals. I don't even think it's good to smell them, let alone be smelled. So um, I like the green cleaners. My clothes don't have an odor about them that they've been cleaned, and they seem to do a really good job of getting them cleaned out 
with things that are safe for the environment. I'm, you know, we're, we have dogs next to us. They're next to our bodies. We don't need them smelling chemicals. So that's another really good thing um, to, to be able to, to think about using if you can find one. And now you're going to all say, what are you talking about? Do you know how to use an iron? I don't particularly like to use an iron, and I tend to buy clothes at this point that I don't have to iron. But if you do, it's really important how to know, know, read what it says on the iron, know how to use it. It's a very, very, very dangerous way to ruin everything you love by putting that iron down on the things that you should never put it on and don't know how to use it. So get get a, get a, a lesson from somebody that you know, read the instructions, and try to use a really good iron when you need to use one. Another thing that's really important to realize and think about is folding clothes. When you get your clothes out of the washing machine, take the time and fold them. And when I say fold them, I mean fold them on the seams, fold them over carefully, and your clothes will last a lot longer. I have a jacket here, and it is a washable jacket, believe it or not. And as you can see, when if I was folding this to put in a suitcase or out of the wash, I would be super careful. And what I would do with it is fold it on the seams, which means you take the seam and put it over this way, put the other seam completely over the other way. So you've got the seams here, and then when you go to pack it, you can fold it and create another seam. And then when your things come out of your suitcase or whatever else you're packing it in, they look good. Or you can roll them in plastic bags that you also get the cleaning back from the from your um, your cleaners. I do that all the time. I take what, after I've folded everything, I will roll it in a plastic bag. And what I find is it comes out about 50,000 times better and there's no need to iron anything, even though it may have been in a suitcase because we know how long it takes to sometimes get someplace for hours, maybe even a day. And I really think that that's another good thing. So those bags that you get from the cleaners can really be used as another way to find something that you want to travel, you know, to keep your things in condition when you travel. And as you can see, I sometimes keep the plastic garment, the bags that they give you from the cleaners on certain things. But they would be on none of the synthetic, the, on the synthetic fabrics and not on the real fabrics, fabrics like the wool, the silk. Um, anything like that needs to breathe. And just as I mentioned, putting a fan someplace, you know, if you don't have a closet like this, Open the closet door and put the fan in front of it and give it all the chance to let that air circulate. Because the amazing thing about doing that is your clothes will look and they will stay good. And, and if we're going to buy quality clothes and pay the money for them, and they're getting more and more expensive, as you can see, then we need to, in, in, we need to increase their age. And not say every season, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get new stuff because it's, it isn't always possible to do that. So let's elongate the lives of what we're doing. And another really good idea that I have for you is um, when you go to buy the clothes that you're going to get, before you buy it, read the label. Because the label may in fact and indeed be able to tell you, well, this is not a hand wash, hang to dry, no ironing, and you may decide, I don't want to have clothes that I have to keep hand washing. And I mean, there's some things like Spanx that's going to be hand washed, or some of your, un you know, your underwear, if you have underwires in your bras or whatever, they're going to be hand washed. But you don't need to buy 16 outfits that you're standing there and coming home and hand washing when you can put them in the washing machine and get them done. Another way to maintain your clothes is if you have a stain or a deodorant mark or anything else on that cloth, if you don't get it out, you don't wear it. There's nothing I think more embarrassing than seeing somebody put their arm up or do whatever and their clothes are all stained. Now, it doesn't mean it didn't happen that day, but if it happened and you can't get it out, it's something that needs to go. So you might want to be really careful about those kinds of clothes on you. Maybe it's a fabric you can't wear. 
And if you spill that coffee down the front of your dress and you can't get rid of it, you can't wear it. So a really good thing to carry with, and I have one in my pocketbook, in my suitcase, wherever I go, I have a, one of those pens that treat stains immediately. I usually use the Tides. I've been pretty happy with them. And you can sometimes buy them in a bulk package because they do tend to dry up just exactly when you don't expect it. So I like the air and the spare theory, which is you take one, you're using it, you have another one with you. And I find them increasingly valuable kind of everywhere I go. I don't remember a trip. I probably haven't taken it out or loaned it to somebody else because they do work quickly and they do work efficiently. So why not use them? Another thing to think about when you are trying to maintain the good and the welfare of your clothes, because the good and the welfare of your clothes is it's what, make your, it's what makes your outfits. Shoes that fit. If your shoes don't fit and they hurt your feet, and we're on our feet all the time, a really good suggestion is get rid of them. There's probably somebody else you can ask to see if they would be able to fit into them or whatever, but I find if those shoes don't fit, they're not going with me anymore because it's been too much of a difficult situation to handle. So why would I want to do it? And the answer is, I wouldn't want to do it. So what you can do is, if there's nothing a shoemaker can do for you, then give up the shoes. Because calluses on our feet, blisters, just crying discomfort. They're not big enough. They don't fit right for whatever reason. Or even if they, if they make you slip on the floor, then they're not the shoes that you need. And you need to get rid of the shoes. And so be really careful when you buy them. And if you find a brand that you like and that fit you consistently, try to stay with them. Um, I have a couple of brands that I like that fit me really well. I can even buy them online. And I find that the more, the more days you spend at a dog show at a time, the more your feet are going to hurt. So shoes that fit really become an important part of how you maintain your wardrobe because... You can't keep getting rid of shoes. So it's a really careful thing to think about. Another thing about the way you can maintain the, you know, maintain your clothes and, and keep them to be what you want them to be is that things like, sh like heavy sweaters. You can't put a heavy sweater on a coat rack, on a, on a coat hanger, or anything else that will maintain, let it maintain its, its shape. Heavy sweaters need to be folded and put on a shelf or put in a drawer. But hanging in your closet is definitely not the way to go. Another way to maintain clothes is to change them out a little bit. Um, I recently, um, I bought something very, well, I thought it was very interesting. I bought a sweater and it was a long, it was a longer sweater, the sort of thing that you can wear um, over leggings, over a dress. And as you all well know, I get cold really quickly. So I saw this sweater and I thought, oh, that'd be really great. And what I didn't realize when I bought it was it didn't have any way to close it. So here's this long sweater. And wait, I'll show it to you. Here it is. This it was, a, it was a really nice sweater coat that I bought. You can see it. What I didn't realize when I bought it is this whole front. Well, I realized it, but I didn't think about it. And there was nothing to keep it closed. Well, how do you go through 100 golden retrievers with your coat open and the, and the sweater in their faces? So I thought about it, and I went to my local tailor, and I said, can we put snaps on the front of this? And she did. And she put these really nice, trendy-looking snaps on the front. And now I have a sweater coat that closes. And I comfortably judged a whole bunch of dogs with it. I was comfortable and warm all day. And all it took... One, two, three, four, five snaps. And another thing in maintaining your clothing is not only doing something like this, changing out what you have, finding a really good tailor. Um, for a long time, especially, I mean, we're two years, 
almost two years into the fact of, of COVID beginning and interfering and changing our lives. And it was really hard to get a tailor because so many of the of the places where you would go for a tailor, or if it's a small a small business, they weren't letting people in. A good place to look for a good tailor is often in your local cleaner. And I have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Korean lady who really is a is a wonderful worker, and she does beautiful work. And she's in that green cleaner that I use, and. She's been a real asset, and you, it's really, it's frustrating because things like, things like a regular jacket, you know, the most important thing that you can, when you buy a jacket, is to make sure it fits across the shoulder because this is the one area that really can't be dealt with too much without taking the whole thing apart. You could buy another jacket by that time. So a really good tailor can do things like hems, side seams, length of sleeves, all those kinds of things that uniquely make the clothes fit you. Because when the clothes do not fit you, they don't look good on you. And then a, a bad fit is like worse than wearing ugly clothes because you just look, you just don't look as good as you can. And you've paid all this money and you have, and you've bought these clothes. Well, for heaven's sakes, make sure they fit. And I, I have, a, I have a, a rule, a fashionista rule, and that is that if something doesn't fit you across the shoulders, leave it in the store. As much as you might love it, think it's the best thing you could have possibly ever owned, if it doesn't fit across the shoulders, it will never fit you properly. And fit is fashion, because if it doesn't fit, it's not going to be fashionable. And ladies you know we have to be fashionable. Or why walk out the door? I mean, if you really think of it, fashion is your statement. I'm saying to you that today, this is what I'm wearing. Now, interestingly enough, I'm, it's freezing here in, New, in the wilds of western New Jersey, and I'm speaking to you while we are having a snowstorm. So I got dressed up kind of warm, and I thought to myself, I don't want you to see me looking like that. So what I did was, and I'll step back hopefully far enough that you can see me, I have on a sweatshirt dress. It's very comfortable. It's very warm. I put a fabulous, fabulous statement necklace with it. I have on a short, short, short little vest that is very comfortable. It's very warm. I have leggings on underneath my um my sweatshirt dress and i have on the most fabulous little sneakers they're really interesting to see and they were um there's a there's a new trend in fashion called streetwear and i was kind of trying to give you the impression of streetwear today and um i'll get you a spin and and you can see it and and it was a fun way to say th that we can dress in many different kinds of fashions and we can have many kinds of options in our clothes. And we don't have to be one thing or another. But our statement would be useless if our clothes didn't fit, if they had stains, if they were wrinkled, if they had hems that were coming down, if the sleeves weren't in the right place. I am short. So for me, I guess we never noticed, um, a long sleeve takes me to a whole other place. It, 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 it shortens me. So I'm very careful all the time. You'll see sometimes I, you know, whatever the sleeve is, it's here. And it's also because I'm touching the dogs a lot, but mostly it is because it's proportioned for me. And all of these things are fashion, but you have to think about things, taking care of your clothes. Do they fit? Do they look good? What could look better? Do my accessories go with? And accessories are probably the most important part of what you will put on. I could take this necklace off and I could put on a scarf. I could take this and, and close this up here. And you would see a whole different look because then you'd see my, my snaps. And it would just give a whole different look. Put on the necklace and I take it to a to a place where I could be comfortable in the ring. 
where I might not be if I hadn't had these accessories on. There are, fashion is not just going and buying the current clothes that are in trend. Think of something like a neckline. I'm not good with, with really high necks if I don't break them up. I might be good in a boat neck. I don't like these because I don't like to bend over in them. But for some of you, that's a great look. So you have to sort of know your look and bring forth the clothes, the accessories, handbags. We should each have three size of handbags. You need a big bag that you're going to use to carry stuff in, like a large tote of some kind. You also would need a medium-sized bag that you can put, you know, if you're going out to, to dinner after a show or if you're having a social life, um, to put enough things in to take with you. And then a smaller bag that's just a, a crossbody that you can put your phone, you can put a lipstick, um, you can put one, other, one or two other things so that you can run a fast errand, have it with you. You can put it in your backpack and pull it out when you need it. These are all things that make up fashion. It's not just what's in trend, like streetwear this year. Um, you, we have so many things to consider. Consider a belt. I'm wearing a belt. It's a great belt. And with a sweatshirt dress, you need a belt. So there it is with the buckle in the front and the wonderful sparkles, which are not on my butt, on my hip you get another whole look to something. So what I'm wearing now, I could dress up, dress down, and not have to change my clothes at all during the day. It just seems to me like a really good way to, to balance all of that out. And that's what we think about when we think about fashion. It's a statement. And the way you make your statement is the way that you will appear to the world. I mean, I see lots of you. I, in fact, I have been so impressed. I even began taking pictures at the shows of some really wonderful people having a great time and looking really good. Because when you dress well and you feel good about the way you dress, I think it brings an added little oomph to your personality every day. You know when you look good and you know when you don't look good. And take that extra little bit of time. Put your clothes out ahead of time. Put them together, see what you like, and, and stay within that framework of things that look good because you've taken care of them in all the myriad of ways that we mentioned. And also remember that when clothes fit, when your shoes fit, and when you fit yourself, we're all different, we all have different body shapes, but when you make things work for the way you look, there is no doubt in my mind that you will be part of the fashionista system that we have, which means we look good, feel good, and we are good. So fashionistas, I'm going to wrap up this little session with telling you fashion is a statement. Make your statement. Mine is not yours. Make it, enjoy it, and get pleasure from it. Okay, fashionistas, I'm going to close the wardrobe wonderland back here take the vault seal it up but i'm going to have it well well ventilated as you well know and we will see you very soon thank you on behalf of the canine chronicle on their website on their facebook page with closet confidential it's elaine lessig saying it was so good to be with you again bye <laughs>